Good evening and uh, welcome to Behind the Headlines. Today is uh, Wednesday the 30th of March uh, 2022. Uh, we are live, we are interactive tonight. In tonight's programme uh, we'll be talking about a very special building project that's taking place in the Middle East in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates and it's called the, let me get my notes here, it's called the Abrahamic Family House and uh, this construction is due to be finished sometime this year in 2022 and on this site they will uh, there is a, a mosque and a synagogue and uh, there's also a church uh, it's meant to develop a peaceful coexistence between the three major monotheistic religions but we're asking could this be the start of the one world religion and uh, sadly uh, my, uh, my fellow co-host uh, Reagan King is not well uh, we pray that he would get better uh, he can't join us tonight so instead I'm joined by Alistair Scott so uh, he's the UK director for Joseph Storehouse and uh, it's also your birthday so it happy is. birthday Alistair thank, you. thank, and thank you. you for joining me and giving up your birthday evening to be with us tonight yeah, I can celebrate that any other day. <laughs> it's good to be with you today. No, absolutely. Tonight. So, so what, yeah. I mean, I also got a, a viewer to thank. So uh, th thanks go out to uh, Catherine who sent me the article from the Vatican News about this building mm -hmm. because, I mean, this is almost pretty much the, the first of its kind. The, the, Arab the Abrahamic family house um, that is due to be constructed um, and finished this year to bring all the three major faiths together mm. in one place and one place of worship. Now, uh, it's all being sold as this is designed to promote peace and uh, coexistence and to end the conflict between religions. But in God's eyes, this is an abomination in this site, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things are moving so fast, aren't they? We're, we're living in incredible times where uh, the one world government, the one world system, you can see even with all the sort of uh, problems that are going on in the nations, it is developing. You can see the, the kind of strategy behind it to develop a one world system. And yeah, I mean, I, I know they, there's total denial that that's the plan behind these buildings. And as you say, it's all about peace and, uh, and so on but it is so much a first step to what could be that one world religion. Um, so we, we've got to watch and we've got to be prayerful about what's going on. Absolutely. So according to the uh, Aday Associates, and uh, they, these are the architects behind this building project, mm. they say that the places of worship are designed to encourage inter-religious dialogue, exchange, the promotion of peaceful coexistence and the acceptance of different beliefs, nationalities and cultures and visitors to these sites will be able to observe religious services listen to the holy scriptures and experience uh, sacred rituals and uh, the building the abrahamic family house as we can see here uh, in abu dhabi uh, was birthed out of a meeting between pope francis and the grand imam ahmed al taeb of al azor uh, university in 2019 and signed the document on human uh, fraternity. And of course, then we see here what the actual church will actually look like, um, this whole multi-faith um, service. Also says here that the Abrahamic family house is due to be completed, as I said earlier, sometime in 2022. It's the first of its kind to have a site that represents all the monotheistic uh, faiths in, in peaceful coexistence. And from a humanistic viewpoint, this is a multi-faith project that sounds wonderful, but the reality is that this is nothing but another man's attempt at creating mm. another Tower of Baal. And also then we're seeing that uh, this potentially could also usher in uh, the Antichrist and the one world religion. And maybe this is what we'll see instead of the third temple being built in Jerusalem, maybe it will represent these three faiths and other faiths. So just to let you know, we are live and interactive tonight. So I'd love to know your views and your opinions. So the question we have uh, tonight is, is the following. <clears throat> um, is the Abrahamic family house one step away from a one world religion. So I'd love to hear your comments and your views are on this subject. Um, I, mean, it, I mean, this one hasn't got that much attention and it's one of the biggest building projects currently under place in, in the United Arab Emirates. And it seems that United Arab Emirates is also hosting um, a conference on, on world government right now as part of the uh, Abu Dhabi 
Expo 2020. Uh, looked it up online. Uh, thanks to my uh, guest today, John Haller, told me about that. But also we see the, the United Arab Emirates and the main one also pushing for the Abraham Accords. And this is this peace treaty they've signed with Israel uh, and other mm. Gulf states. Mm. Yes, it, it, it's very interesting because, like you say, it's one of those things that hasn't uh, has been kept quite under the carpet. And if it's about to be completed in 2022, you'd imagine the site is uh, well in advance of, uh, of being opened. And you can see again from the pictures we've just been watching, there's no expense being spared. It's going to be very spectacular. Obviously somewhere that they want people to visit. I'm sure it's very, going to be very good for tourist trade if you're getting all people from all the religions coming down to visit it. But as you say, it's a, it's a dangerous concept and it's, it's another one of man's good ideas. But God usually intervenes in those things and exposes. And we, that's, what, that's how we've got to be. We, just like we're doing tonight, we, we bring it to the surface so people are aware of what's going on, particularly those uh, who are watching our program and can be praying and listening in and discerning what the Spirit of the Lord is actually saying about it all. Absolutely. And also, Alistair, it's interesting how the only uh, figure that seems to be able to unite uh, mm. Judaism, Christianity and also Islam is Abraham, of course, known as Father Abraham. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and this is why they're calling it the Abrahamic family house. Uh, and this is how they are uniting the Jewish community, the Muslim community and the Christian community uh, to work together. Now, I'm just going to read out some of the, uh, the values that are being promoted in this uh, modern day uh, Tower of mm. Baal. Uh, a Babel, I should say, uh, project going on in, in the United Arab Emirates. They said the Abrahamic family house design is designed by architect uh, Sir David uh, Adeje, um, captures the values shared by Judaism, Christianity and Islam through three main buildings, including a mosque and a church and a synagogue in one place. As such, the complex uh, in innovation recounts the history and builds bridges between human civilizations and heavenly messages. It says, besides the three places of worship, the site includes a cultural center that aims to encourage people to exemplify human fraternity and solidarity within a, a, a community that cherish the value of mutual respect, peaceful, peaceful coexistence, with the unique character of each faith preserved. Uh, and that's how they're marketing it. So mm. they've, they've, they, we can see on our screens, this is what it will look like uh, later this mm. year. And uh, sadly to the Lord, this is abomination because the second of the Ten Commandments say, you shall have no other God before me. me yeah. And also Jesus said, I am the way, the light and the truth. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Yeah. And there won't be centering as Jesus or Yeshua as the main central figure in this building project. Exactly. I mean, you can see where this is leading, as in it's leading to many roads lead to, to, to God, uh, which is the globalist uh, kind of thinking. And, you know, the words they're using are so kind of uh, interesting. You know, they talk about peace and they talk about love and they talk about unity. But you can't have unity with anything other than the Holy Spirit, you know, and this, this is a man-made idea which is worrying. So, so yeah, we've got to be aware of, of the kind of strategy that's going on. Interesting, that whole area, isn't it? The Abraham Accord, which, uh, which was a great thing that uh, Trump, Trump uh, did in his, during his uh, time as president. And then we've got the, the World Cup also being held. And so it's like this area... Next door, yeah, in, in Qatar. Yeah, next yeah door. exactly. But it's the same sort of region, isn't it? Definitely. And uh, you can see they are kind of building up this this area as being sort of significant and in the midst of it they're trying to get an antichrist or at least they don't make it clear but we can see the potential of a move of the antichrist coming in Absolutely. through it. And it seems the United Arab Emirates is, mm. is really at the centre and the forefront of this uh, move towards globalism. Uh, I've got a few text messages coming in, which is great. So thank you for emailing into the programme. Obviously, want to hear more of your comments. Uh, Jay writes, uh, hi, guys. I've heard that Islam is referred to as the religion of the desert in Bible prophecy. If you've ever come across this verse, indeed, this all seems very a new world order. Great show, Jay. That's a great point. I haven't come mm, across that point. Yeah, uh, definitely something worth uh, exploring. Mm. This one says, according to the Bible, Yahweh is the one true God. All other so-called gods are idols, uh, 
behind whom are demons. Uh, those who promote uh, these are wolves in sheep's clothing. God bless you both. And that's from Hugh. So it's a great email from Hugh. So thank, thank you for you that one. Much. And then we've got this one. Uh, happy birthday, uh, Alistair. <laughs> thank you. And uh, get well, Reagan. God bless Israel and blessings to you both. So I appreciate yeah, that. Appreciate so please feel free to send them in. Now, I'm just going to read out a little bit about what the actual architect of the uh, Abrahamic uh, family house in Abu Dhabi uh, has said about his building project. Um, he said, as an architect, I want to create a building uh, that starts to dissolve the notion of hierarchical difference. It should represent university and totality, uh, something higher uh, that enhances the, the richness of human life. And uh, the uh, Ajay Associates, uh, which is his company in charge of, of this religious building project, state the following on their website. It says the Abrahamic family house will be a collection of three religious spaces, a mosque, a synagogue and a church, all of which will sit upon a secular pavilion. Uh, the house will serve as a community for inter-religious dialogue and exchange. Uh, nurturing the values of peaceful coexistence and acceptance among different beliefs, nationalities and cultures. And within each of the houses of worship, visitors will have the opportunity to observe religious services, listen to Holy Scripture and experience sacred rituals. The fourth space, not affiliated with any specific religion, uh, will serve as a centre for all people of goodwill to come together as one. The community will also offer educational and event-based programming. And again, the architect, uh, Sir David uh, Adajay, uh, says, or Adajay, says that the project will represent uh, the new typology of world architecture. There's never been a building which houses the three faiths in one form, he said. Rather than mixing up the three, he wanted to preserve the unique experience of each of the faiths while at the same time connecting them with all one device. So that's what we see happening mm -hmm. right now. In, uh, in Abu Dhabi, which is the capital of the United Arab Emirates. But also fitting into this is the Abraham Accords. And we've got this excellent uh, CBN news report to go to now that uh, uh, looks at the close cooperation now between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. Commerce, trade, and even defense work all are flourishing between Israel and its Arab neighbors who are part of the Abraham Accords. This historic alliance is now 14 months old, and the progress it's created is dramatic. The big question, will the largest and most powerful Arab nation join in? Chris Mistral has the latest from Jerusalem. In one of the latest signs of cooperation, Israel and the United Arab Emirates signed a joint venture to send an unmanned vehicle to the moon by 2024. That followed a surprise visit last month during a multinational military exercise when the commander of the UAE Air Force met with his Israeli counterpart. And on the commercial front, this Israeli expo in Dubai is another sign of success resulting from the historic peace agreement. It's been amazing, the progress. We're watching business deals to be developed, tourism deals. We're seeing the Jerusalem Post uh, forming uh, a media alliance with, a, with an Emirati uh, you know, newspaper and uh, TV company. We're seeing Israeli airlines open up direct routes to Arab countries, UAE, Bahrain, Morocco. We're seeing Moroccan and Emirati and Bahraini airlines flying direct routes into Israel. Best-selling author Joel Rosenberg chronicles the creation and progress of the Accords in his latest book, Enemies and Allies. CBN News has followed Rosenberg as he's organized delegations of evangelical leaders to meet with Arab heads of state. I've sat with them, I've listened to them, both before the Abraham Accords and now that it's open. And they, the, the Arab leaders are very, very excited. Not just what's happening in the last year and a few months, but where this is going. One of the agreement's architects, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, tells CBN News he sees a bright future for the Abraham Accords. I think this changed history. I don't think it's going to go back. I think the people of these nations can see that this is the rightful Jewish homeland. It ought to be recognized as such. It's not good foreign policy to have the destruction of Israel at the center of how you think about the world. The commerce, the trade, the defense work that will be done between these nations will create prosperity for people in every one of them. And I think that's why ultimately there will be many other nations that will see this as both right and righteous. Here in Israel, what began under the Netanyahu government 
is continuing with the aggressive pursuit by the coalition of Prime Minister Neftali Bennett. Still, a lingering concern here is whether the Biden administration will invest the political capital and diplomatic muscle to advance the accords. This recent trilateral meeting between the U.S., UAE and Israel, led by Secretary of State Antony Blinken, suggests a positive direction. Today, our three countries discussed two new working groups that we are launching uh, together. Uh, the first is on religious coexistence. Um, this is a moment of rising anti-Semitism, rising Islamophobia, and we want Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States to work together to build tolerance and ensure that all religious groups can worship in their traditional ways without violence, without intimidation, without discrimination. Another remaining question one year into the Accords is will Saudi Arabia, the largest and most influential Sunni Arab nation, take steps to join? The short version is I believe the Saudis are weighing right now at the highest levels. Is it in their national interests? to make peace with Israel. It is saying both publicly and privately, the Saudis are moving towards normalization, but they're not there yet. I think there's gonna be a lot of reporting we still need to do, but when that happens, if it happens, I think it will. My prediction on CBN News is, I think the Saudis are going to make that decision that it is in their national interest. Overshadowing the success of any peace effort remains the specter of a nuclear Iran. In just weeks, the U.S. and other nations that signed the original Iranian nuclear deal are scheduled to resume negotiations. It was a bad deal six years ago. It is a bad deal today. I hope the U.S. will not make that mistake again. And look what happened in the last six years. They enriched more uranium. They developed a ballistic missile technology. They're sending billions of dollars to their proxies. It will be a major mistake if the U.S and the P5 uh, will actually join this uh, agreement. You not only have the Iran threat, but Iran forming an alliance with Russia and Turkey and North Korea and China. So that's the darkness to the east and the north, and then we have all this light here and to the west. And so, to use a weather analogy, those are two building fronts, and there's always the danger that when those two fronts meet, there's gonna be a storm. Yeah. From most accounts, the report card on one year of the Abraham Accords reflects a substantial transformation in the region. While the signing members seem resilient, it's almost certain Middle East opponents of these agreements will test their resolve. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Great CBN and news report there, and we're very grateful for that report, and particularly the excellent work being done by Chris Mitchell, the uh, Bureau Chief in Jerusalem, and his excellent program, Jerusalem Dateline. Uh, that was filmed a few months ago, so now we see that there is now a new Iran deal that was 100 times worse mm. than the previous one, and you have to look back at previous uh, episode of the uh, Behind the Headlines if you want to know more. Got a few more emails in. Uh, this is a, a great email from Dory and it writes, Hi guys, I uh, heard about this a while ago, but also that a similar uh, building is being built in Berlin and EU leaders would like to see them being spread to other countries. That's very helpful and I, I did read that there was something in Berlin as well. So thank you very much for that, Dory. Uh, this one is Alex in Scotland. It says, Hi gentlemen, great programme. Wasn't aware of this. I do know that uh, people do want to see the common ground, which is as believers in Jesus, we would compromise our faith in this development. Those who do not know uh, who Jesus is, do not understand and will do these things out of a misguided ignorance. Mm. And that's blessings from Alex. So thank you for that. Alex is very, being very much pushed by Pope Francis, uh, this agenda. We also have one here from uh, Mary who writes, uh, thank you for your excellent program. Heard tonight on the BBC that Russia and China are meeting to discuss a multi-faith democratic world order. I think they mentioned Afghanistan. Not sure I was, uh, not sure I was in shock. Everything is moving so quickly. Uh, good job to keep up and uh, good wishes to all at Revelation TV. So thank you for that one. And um, we also see that that's the picture of this new multi-faith building being built in Berlin. So thanks, Luke, for getting that one. Uh, just shows you this is where we're moving towards very rapidly and very fast, uh, one world religion. Uh, this, uh, Jane writes, uh, hi, Simon, and guess it sounds like a supermarket, religious pick and mix. 
Uh, I have a kilogram of Islam, three kilograms of Judaism and a few grams of uh, Christlam. God bless you for this program. All believers need to know this stuff. Uh, and Shalom from Jane. So thank you very much for that one, Jane. And uh, Joyce writes uh, this one. Uh, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We need to be aware and understand what is taking place and pray for discernment. Uh, and I certainly do. Um, Alistair, in yep. terms of criticism, now I'm just going to read out a little bit mm. of criticism regarding this new Abrahamic uh, faith house that's being built, or in the process of being built. So Muhammad Abdul Salam is the uh, General Secretary of the Higher Committee on Human Fraternity, um, who signed the agreement between the United Arab Emirates and the Vatican uh, back in, I think, the early part of uh, 2019. And out of it, we have the Abrahamic family house being built. And um, this is what he says. He writes on the following opinion. He says, for decades, the East and the Arab world in particular have been portrayed in Western media as regions plagued by religious intolerance and persecution. However, religions are certainly not the main cause of this negative image as much as political agendas were. Ever since the conflict over power of the Middle East arose between rival empires, uh, these forces exploited religion to push their political projects. Neither religion nor their sacred texts show, sow the seeds of such conflict of it fueled. Uh, there's, there is clear historical evidence that supports uh, uh, religious innocence in this, as they were many places were tolerant and coexistence between uh, religions prevailed. Do you want to carry on and read what else he, he says there, there Alistair? Mm -hmm. And from this standpoint, the call for hum human fraternity has emerged from Abu Dhabi, where the document on human fraternity was co-signed in 2019. Two great religious figures, Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of Al-Hazar, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Tayeb. The, the, the call to human fraternity is, purely, is a purely humanitarian one, without any ideological orientations or political calculations and is addressed to all humanity, believers and non-believers alike, in response to this global initiative promoting fraternity and coexistence, a false and disparaging narrative has recently emerged claiming that there are attempts to create a new religion dubbed the Abrahamic religion. Those who promote such ill-intended and groundless thoughts try to associate this so-called effort to foster one religion with the Abrahamic Family House initi Initiative, currently under construction in Abu Dhabi and under the guidance of the HCHF. The interfaith complex will host three separate houses of worship, a Christian church, Islamic mosque and a Jewish synagogue, as well as an educational centre, unaffiliated with any specific religion. Some websites and social media in the Western and Arab worlds have taken aim to, at this noble project by falsely asserting that the initiative is an attempt to merge all the Abrahamic faiths and promote one world religion. Some have even labelled our project a Chrislam venture, an idiom blending the names of Christianity and Islam in a manner that dis denigrates both faiths. The HCHF was previously subject to such accusations about starting a one world religion amid the first stage of the COVID-19 pandemic. This was when it launched the Pray for Humanity campaign, calling on believers of all religions to join in a global prayer to ask God to end the pandemic, help those working in the medical community and guide scientists to find the necessary vaccines. The allegation at the time was that our call was to invent a prayer bringing Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus and other faith followers together to pray, pave the way for a new religion, subs subsuming them all. Despite these false allegations, on the day of the prayer, millions of people worldwide responded to the call positively. Each prayed according to their own beliefs, rituals, sacred texts and in their own languages. No common texts or rituals were provided, only the timing and the purpose of the prayer. Mm. Quite, quite something. It is. Yeah. Uh, also, what, what I, I, the first time I ever heard anything like this is the Abrahamic religion. Mm. This is the first time I've ever yeah. come across that yeah. term. Uh, and I think this is ultimately what this is all about. And, and this also explains why the Pope, for example, last year, 
despite the danger, went on an official uh, visit to Iraq. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made a famous speech at the birthplace of Abraham, the city of Ur, um, calling for the religions of the world to unite, but particularly between, I would say, Catholicism and Islam, Islam. particularly Sunni Islam, um, because we see that no evangelicals true Christians could be invited to this or even being engaged in any of this. And when you actually look through the fraternity document that was signed in early January 2019, the word Jesus is not even mentioned once. So you know that this is of a different yeah. spirit. Uh, and this also captures the kind of spirit of the age. So, you know, we could see that this new Abrahamic faith or religion bringing Judaism, Christianity and Islam all in together as one religion could be the, the core that makes up the one world religion as we see in the book of Revelation, particularly Definitely. Revelation 13. Definitely feels that way, doesn't it? Uh, and as you say, it's it just an open door for compromise, isn't it? Particularly, as you say, Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No way. No one comes to the Father except through me. And yet, as you see, we've read this through and Jesus doesn't get a mention. Uh, and, and, and yeah, you can just see it's, it's this potential of getting, it's criticizing those people who've picked up discerning the dangers that are ahead. Because, you know, the prophetic word and the revelations warns us of this one world religion coming and uh, we need to be that much more aware and ahead you know so this is why the spirit of the lord is alerting and, I, and I, I, in referring back to one or two of the the uh, emails earlier you know people need to be reminded or told these stories because you know i i was aware of this but i didn't realize how far ahead it had got until talking about this earlier this week and, and you realize it's it's only months away or possibly weeks away yeah uh, it has to be completed and up and running you know uh, it's a dangerous thing absolutely right i've got a few more uh, text messages obviously a popular topic tonight uh this is a great email from, from frankie and definitely on the ball uh the document on human fraternity for world peace and living together also known as the abu dhabi declaration or Abu Dhabi Agreement is a joint statement signed by Pope Francis of the Catholic Church and Sheikh Ahmed El Taeb, uh, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, which is the spiritual center for Sunni Islam in Egypt. On the 4th of February 2019 in Abu Dhabi, the United uh, Arab Emirates keep shining uh, bright guys. Well done, that's a very thoughtful, uh, very intelligent uh, email uh, sent in. This one's from Tom writes that the stepfather of the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, was the late Robert Maxwell's personal attorney, uh, the last man to speak to him before his death. Interestingly, Maxwell named his publishing company Pergamon, where the famous altar of Satan is located. Strange. Mm. Uh, interesting comment, Tom, so I appreciate mm. that. Uh, this one says, yes, Simon, Jesus clearly says that that he is the way, the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except through me. Mm. I've come to believe this truth from the Zoroastrian faith. Uh, interesting. Uh, we uh, were born again Christians, will be labelled bigots, racists, uh, homophobic, narrow-minded, etc. I pray we'll be ready to stand for Jesus and the truth of his word. Love, uh, Lord may have mercy on us. Uh, please, yeah, that's a great email, so thank you for that one. Uh, this one says, totally agree, uh, Christianity is the only true way. How do you propose we deal with other religions, show tolerance or call them out as false and strive to have no representation of them in our country? Now, we live in a democracy and as part of that democracy, we have pluralism, mm -hmm. which means that you are free to worship any God you want in this country. I mean, we've even got legislation now saying that if you want to carry out Wicca, Satanism, it, it's allowed, or even, mm. even you know, celebrating the kind of force with Star Wars, you're allowed to do that. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's all part of a democracy. Uh, and those are the tenets of democracy that people have that choice. Um, but what we have to do is call out, is to say, yes, Jesus is the only the way. He is the only way to the Father because none of the other religions deal with the issue of blood sacrifice mm. and the toning of blood in order to have the forgiveness of sins being cleansed and, and therefore being able to be clean before the almighty God and the creator of the earth. Uh, and no other religion does that. Within Judaism, they had the, the temple uh, sacrifices that, that were, were done for the cleansing of the nation. But since 
Jesus' resurrection, he tore that uh, curtain in two. There is no longer a temple. There's no longer a blood sacrifice anymore. So Jesus is the only atoning Mm. sacrifice. And and, and Christianity is the only religion where you cannot get to God through your own works or through your own good deeds. Exactly. Hebrews talks about it, doesn't it? That he's the better price, the the better uh, sacrifice. He's the the one and only sacrifice. So, you know, we don't have to go the way of... uh, uh, killing animals and so on as, as sacrifices and and you know this word tolerance it's it's it sounds so nice but it's 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 really as believers and we believe we that Jesus is the only way if we're being tolerant yes we can love them and, and all the rest but we must as you just said challenge the fact that there is no other way um, and as nice as any other religion may sound and uh, everything else people are not going to get to heaven unless they know Jesus. That's, that's, that's the truth. Um, and if we truly want to see everyone get, get the opportunity to choose life and not death, blessing and not cursing, we have to be stronger in our faith and stronger and more upright and more determined to get the, the word out and not compromise in this way. I mean, I, it worries me the more we're talking about it, the more I see this as a, as a one place where people will be very friendly to one another but it will just dilute the fact that there is only one way to heaven. Absolutely. We're going to accept anybody. You know, it's, it's almost like I would have thought before, as long as I'm more good than bad, I'm going to make it you know, to whatever paradise is. But that's not it. <laughs> it's nothing about that. It's not a balancing act. It's all about knowing the Savior. I, I mean, Jesus describes how even our, uh, even our most righteous acts are nothing but nothing. filthy rags to God. Yeah. So there's nothing we can do in ourselves that can attain salvation. That's only by the uh, grace of God. Um, earlier today, um, I uh, had a great interview with uh, a guy called uh, John Haller from Ohio. He has a, a superb a weekly uh, prophetic update. And uh, this is his thoughts on the construction of this new Abrahamic family house being built in Abu Dhabi because he's been watching this for a few years. John, a warm welcome to Buying Headlines from Idaho in the States. Good to be with you again, Simon. Um, John, you've been, through your weekly prophecy updates, you've been following very closely this um, building project that's taking taking place in the United Arab Emirates. The building of what was called the Abrahamic Family House, uh, which is a complex where they're building a church, a mosque, and a synagogue, all to bring about peace and reconciliation between the religions. Um, what are your thoughts on the Abrahamic family house being built right now in Abu Dhabi? Well, I think it's very significant in the sense that, uh, particularly with the players that are behind it and how it plays into end-time Bible prophecy. Um, you know, this this is arises out of a, a meeting that the Pope went to in uh, 2019, early 2019, where he met with the, um, the, the imam who is the head of Al-Azhar University in, Tel- in uh, I'm sorry, not Tel Aviv, Cairo. Uh, it's the largest Sunni institution, theological institution, most important Sunni theological institution on the planet. And at that time, they signed an agreement uh, in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates where they would uh, they talked about the human fraternity. They were there was sort of a peace agreement between Islam and Catholicism, although the Pope thinks he's the head of all of Christianity. So that in itself was very significant. But then flowing out of that, they announced plans to build this Abrahamic house of all faiths or Abrahamic house of faith in Dubai. It's under construction. It is supposed to open this year. Uh, I, I know that I, the, at least the best I can determine, it's about three quarters completed. Now, by the way, this is not the only unifying house of all faiths that has been built or that is under construction. There is one here in Omaha, Nebraska, of all places, uh, where they have the same thing. They have a church, a synagogue, and a mosque. They uh, and, and so it's this bringing together of these three major monotheistic religions of the world. They also have one that's being built on Museum Island in Berlin called the House of One, 
which is a singular structure that has worship areas for all three of the Abra what they call the Abrahamic face, you know, the, uh, but it's, it's very interesting how this is, this has happened because it, in conjunction with that, it seems like there's been this flow of things. And a lot of this started back with uh, Barack Obama in 2009, one of his first major foreign trips. He went to Al-Azhar University and he talked about how there was this unity between Islam and Christianity. So this, is, this has been in place for a long time. It was, you should look up that speech. It's quite stunning, some of the things that he said, referring to Jesus by, his, by what, how he's referred to as Muslims as Isa. So the Pope signs this agreement with the Sunni lead theologian. They're building this house. And they're also building, you know, like I said, they've built one in Omaha already. They're building one in Berlin. And there's others that are being planned around the world. So it does show that this coming together of these religions, at least, at least on one level, of course, evangelicals would reject this type of unity, hopefully. But, you know, Simon, you, you can find very easily... Uh, there's a church in uh, Texas. Um, the pastor is a guy named uh, Robert. Um, I want to say Robert Morris, but I don't think that that's right. But but they've had these unity meetings where they have a, an Islamic imam and evangelical people who claim to be evangelicals come in and talk about the unity between the faiths. And this is just this is just what's happening. It's uh, pretty unbelievable. Uh, uh, and John, um, critics of uh, of this project have uh, labelled it the Abrahamic religion, saying that they are actually creating a, a new religion, bringing Christianity, Islam and Judaism all under one roof. And of course, we know that that could be a big stepping stone to building the uh, one world religion um, mentioned in the book of Revelation. Um, do you see this as the beginning of the emergence of a new religion that could represent that one world religion that the book of revelation talks about I, I certainly do i mean i think that there is this uh, tendency to to lose distinctions I, look in the in a world where we really can't uh, i'll use example from last week when a nomination for the highest court in the united states the supreme court uh, Judge Contingy Brown Jackson was asked a, she's already on a court of appeals, was asked a question, can you define the word woman? And she was stuck for an answer. So in a world where we, we really have this problem where people can't define basic biology that, and, and so everything kind of melds together. I mean, and this is a big deal in the United States right now, with especially with the agenda to bring things into school. So then you just translate layer on top of that, the inability to distinguish between religions. And so people just sort of think, well, you know, it's, they, everybody worships the same God. They, you know, the God of Islam is the same as the God of Christianity and, and the God of Judaism. And they're not the same. They're, they're very remarkably different if you look at the text of the, the scriptures. I mean, there's, there's a pretty good synergy between Judaism and Christianity to a great extent. But the God of Islam is completely, is not the same. And, and, and so this, it blurs the lines. And I think this is what's happening. And it's also going forward in other levels. Now, I don't know how much traction this has received, but we know that the Temple Mount in Jerusalem is a very important place in end time Bible prophecy. You know, we see in 2 Thessalonians 2 that this son of perdition, who's uh, we've given the, the name the Antichrist, will go into the temple and declare himself above all that is called God. Daniel talks about it. Jesus also talked about it in Matthew chapter 24. And it's a very important event of the end times. Uh, and so the question is, how does this, how does this work out in a, on, a, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, which is under the control of Islamic authorities, and is the scene of quite a bit of 
uh, turmoil right now and, and conflict. And at the templemount.org website, I sent you a picture of it. I'm sure you can insert this into the video that uh, there was a, a Jewish architect who came up with a way to transform the eight-sided dome of the rock there on the Temple Mount, the gold dome. T t uh, um, it's, it's not really a mosque. It's more of a con commemorative building. The mosque is Al-Aqsa Mosque, a little bit to the south. But at the Dome of the Rock, take the eight-sided Dome of the Rock and build wings for each of the major religions of the world, uh, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Hinduism, and then the center wings between each of those four main points would be the mystical aspect of each of those religions. And then I, I see a lot of push for people, even in Juda on the Ju uh, Judaism side, to refer to what's going to be built there as a house of prayer for all people. And, and it, it just seems like it's set up to lose its distinctive Jewish character. And it's interesting that if, if something like this architect proposes, and I don't know how much traction it's getting, uh, but it has been proposed, but understand that that, that that mosque is built on the foundation of a Byzantine church, which is built on the foundation of a Roman octagon shaped thing, which was built on the, where the site of the, uh, Herod's temple and Solomon's temple were. So they've already, it's already all there, the layering of all those sites or all those different religions. Now we're just sort of formalizing it through the, um, through what the Pope did back in 2019 and the building of this structure. And there's also one related thing that I'd like to mention just briefly. There is a, a push uh, that I, or I believe that what happened after the Pope signed that agreement, which was during the Trump administration, uh, the Trump administration, primarily through Jared Kushner and the U.S. State Department, started bringing in different Sunni Arab countries into the what we now know as, know as the Abraham Accords. And Kushner uh, has put together a thing called the Abraham Accord Peace Institute. He's raised several billion dollars from Sunni Arab countries to put into an investment fund. He's very close to the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. So there is this growing alliance between Sunni Arab countries and Israel. And then over the past week, there were two major meetings in the Negev, one in Egypt between Israel and several Arab countries in Egypt, well, which is itself an Arab country. And then this past weekend, there was yet another meeting in the Negev where things fleshing out the Abraham Accords were put in place. So this is, I think this is very significant prophetically. I do think that we might get some clues as to how this alliance forms if we look at Psalm 83. Uh, and, I, and I'm very concerned about it. it. On the surface, it's like, how can you be against peace? But uh, the aspect of these Abraham Accords that seems to be emphasized the most is the economic component. And I think that that has significance for those, those of us who follow end time Bible prophecy. Now, the practical thing for the Abraham Accords is because it, it gives an alliance against Iran. But this is very, it's very problematic. Israel is a very difficult position, particularly when you have the United States pushing for bringing Iran into a new nuclear agreement, which will result in them getting tens of billions of dollars initially, plus annual revenues in the billions from this, in the hundreds of billions of dollars. This is all very difficult for Israel to navigate. And 
the United States is just losing its influence that it's had to kind of broker anything. And I don't think it's any surprise that the terrorist attacks, pretty horrific terrorist attacks that we've seen in Israel, within Israel, within central Israel, central Beersheba, uh, a city, uh, mainly Orthodox Jewish city, uh, town or village or city near Tel Aviv, uh, there were five people killed just yesterday in a terrorist attack. I think this is all connected together. And uh, the United States just is completely removing itself from the equation. And the Arabs, the Sunni Arab countries, they're looking for, I would highly recommend David Wormser's article on Jewish News Syndicate. Uh, he's written two over the last uh, week, uh, talking about how Arabs look for their tribal they look, they look for a strong horse to represent Absolutely. them. And the United States is not doing that. And they're trying to find somebody to stand up against Iran. And, uh, and John, John, finally, um, can you talk about the role that uh, Pope Francis is playing in this by being really the main architect behind this Abrahamic uh, family house that's being built, um, sure. primarily because also last year he went to on a state visit to Iraq, um, he addressed the uh, ancient city of Ur, um, the birthplace of Abraham. Do you think there's a connection between the, the, what Pope Francis is doing and trying to unite the one world religions, I mean, even possibly creating the Abrahamic religion and also its connection to the Abraham Accords? Because there is a, a spiritual religious component to this agreement that Israel signed that to allow uh, Sunni Muslims entry to the Temple Mount to wor worship on up on the Alaska Mosque, correct? Yes, that's right. Um, well, the Sunnis have always controlled the Temple Mount. But what's now happened is they're bringing Shia tourists there to go worship on the Temple Mount. And what the Pope did, uh, the Pope went sort of beyond what the Abraham Accords have done. It was kind of interesting dynamic. So we have the, the Pope doing his thing on the religion. Then the Trump administration comes in and puts helps start putting together these Abraham Accords. And it's almost like the Pope said, well, I got to do more. I got to do more to bring people in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Iraq. And when he went to Iraq, who he met with was the leading. So he gets the leading Sunni guy in 2019. And then when he goes to Iraq, he meets with this imam. Um, and I don't remember his name. He is the leading Shia cleric on planet Earth. I mean, so he is the guy yeah. under he's the guy under whom Khomeini and the, you know, the uh, Ayatollahs, oh, yeah. who the mullahs who control things in Iran and the Pope meets with him. Uh, and it was a very interesting dynamic in that. Um, but understand, too, that this imam seems to be behind this piece also. So it's the geopolitical level, there's still the conflict between Shia and Sunni countries and the tribal conflict, but you seem to have the holy men from <laughs> Sh Sunni, Shia, and Roman Catholicism uh, putting this all together. And I'm just going to tell you that much, many evangelicals will just fall in line with this because why could we not be against, why should we not be against peace? Uh, why should we be concerned about that? Uh, John Haller, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Behind the Headlines. Um, please keep up the excellent work you're doing with your weekly uh, prophetic updates. Uh, they're an absolute essential to watch as we kind of see the Bible unfold and, and see how rapidly we're moving towards end time prophecy events. Uh, an absolutely essential watch. So thank you so much for joining us today on Behind the Headlines. Thanks. Good to be with you. Very much appreciate uh, John Haller's effort there. Mm. And uh, he does a weekly uh, prophecy update, also a live one on a Sunday afternoon, our time, it's morning, his time in the States. So if you just type in uh, John Haller in YouTube,
prophecy update, uh, you'll come to it. Um, very informative, um, gives a great strategic a analysis of what's going on both in the States and around the world and with Israel. So definitely one to watch. Uh, thank you for your emails. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left of the program, so I need to, uh, to get through these. Uh, Norma writes, hi guys, how can we believe Muslims when it's the most uh, holy book in the Quran? It tells Muslims how, uh, when and how to kill Jews and Christians, plus, but plus Jews and Christians have a different God to the Muslim God. That's Norma. So thank you for your views, Norma. This one is Abrahamic face. Uh, Abraham did not worship the God of Islam, uh, so it should not be included as the Abrahamic faith. It's, it is only legitimate to include Judaism and Christianity. And that's from Christine. Completely agree with you and Christine on that one. Uh, we've got a different opinion here. This one says, hi, Simon. Thank you for this new information you brought to us this evening. Jesus said, go and proclaim the good news to all the nations to the world. Perhaps by this, Jesus asked his disciples to create a one world fraternity uh, in the name of his father. Perhaps Pope Francis is attempting to bring the condemnation, oh, sorry, the commandment of uh, Jesus to a wider family of Abraham, which we're all part of. Please give him a chance to proclaim the good news in this way, Mario. Sorry, Mario, I can't do that, I'm afraid, because the Pope is leading us into a one world religion um, and uh, Jesus is not the center and uniting all the religions into one is an antichrist uh, agenda. You just need to read the book of Revelation uh, and you'll see this unfold, particularly in Revelation 13. Uh, this one, uh, Les writes, uh, deception is in many forms. I would say that the devil does not care what people believe as long as they don't believe the truth. Very true. Uh, it says, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, for the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing all the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the Messiah, who is the image and likeness of God. Amen to that one. Mm. Um, Susan writes, I just have to read this briefly. Uh, she writes, I'm joining late to the program tonight. Many Christians believe we get to, uh, into heaven, get saved and change behavior. I remember Jesus said that there are two kingdoms, light and dark, mm -hmm. uh, so true. And uh, this one says, Gerald Kushner is famous for having bought uh, the 666 Fifth Avenue tower block and sold it to the Qataris worrying Jim. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have to wait and see that one, but I don't think Harold Kushner could in any way be the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. It lacks, it lacks yeah, charisma. Yeah. Uh, um, before we um, finish the programme, Alison, I just want to give our, our viewers a little bit more of a heads up in these last two minutes of the programme. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Osama Hassan, for the research consultant for the Tony Blair Institute for yep. Global Change, is endorsing the Abrahamic family house and is endorsing the Abrahamic family uh, building. Now, what he's essentially saying very, very quickly is that, uh, that Christians and Jews should come together and Islo Christian civilization, and he's, this is why he's endorsing this uh, building of the Abrahamic faiths, and of course behind him is Tony Blair, and when it comes to big globalist mm -hmm. issues, it's not surprising that Tony Blair is, is behind the scene. But very quickly, in, in about 30 seconds, Alistair, we can see, can't we, that possibly this new Abrahamic religion could form the religious component that, uh, that unites all the religions of the world, and maybe mm -hmm. this would be the centre for uh, the construction of the third temple that the Antichrist defies. Yeah, you can see the whole sort of atmosphere of what's going on. I was just thinking as I was listening to John Haller there, um, you know, uh, th th there's a desperation because of what's going on in, in Ukraine. There's a desperation for, fee for peace, particularly in the Western world. And, uh, and, and, you know, there's the warning there, isn't it, in Jeremiah and so on, where, where, where the prophets talk about peace, peace, when there is no peace. And so we've got to be aware that this is sounding good. It's a good sound bite, but it's, uh, it's definitely a dangerous place. Alistair, thank you so much for joining us on Behind the Headlines. I appreciate, I know our viewers appreciate that. And Happy birthday for tonight. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I just want to thank you for watching tonight's Behind the Headlines. We can really see the emergence of this one world religion now taking place with the building of the Abrahamic uh, family house in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. This should be a, a alarm and concern us all that we need to be watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem. And we've got to ensure that we're not deceived in these end times. As Jesus said, the great deception will come upon us. So I want to thank you for watching tonight's Behind the Headlines.